Hey guys, welcome back to Primetime Studios. Like always, I'm Primetime Phil, and today I want to discuss a few key points about the Dallas Cowboys Hall of Fame game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think a lot of Cowboy fans just need to remember that this is only preseason. We're only seeing backup people, and if there's any starters in, it's usually only in the beginning to kind of give them a rhythm before the season starts because you don't want them to get hurt going into those seasons like you've seen in previous years. You've got Amari Cooper standing on the sideline, but remember, this is only preseason. We don't need to bet on this. We don't need to bet your friend, hey, man, I'll shave my head if my Cowboys win. That's something that is just ridiculous, and I see people doing, and I'm like, do you not understand the concept of a preseason game? These are somewhat meaningful, but they're meaningless in the sense of the winning and lost thing. You just want to see people out there making plays, putting them in situations that are live football that you can't go and, oh, well, let's do a mulligan on that one. The only person that's going to do that is the referees, and I think that's what people forget is that this is preseason. People are only trying to make roster spots, so don't bet with your friends uh, your mortgage, basically. Definitely one of my bright spots now is Micah Parsons. The guy is amazing. Our first round draft pick. It's nice to see him live in action, causing chaos in another person's offense other than our own in training camp. To see him go sideline to sideline, and yeah, you may have seen the running back get to the outside of him, but the guy was getting to the outside too directly to the outside in the boundary because Micah was going sideline to sideline. I think the positive on that fumble recovery, you a lot of people go, well, he got a fumble recovery. Well, it was hand given to him. I think the positive on that was that he got upfield and he was in the right position at the right time because he had already penetrated their offense and gotten into their backfield. So it's nice to see Micah causing chaos into offenses in their first game. And I'm looking forward to seeing what he does later on in the seasons when he's able to improve and got a feel for the game. I think another bright spot in this game is definitely the defense overall. We looked really good. It's nice to see that they're not giving up big plays. It's more of a bend but don't break defense. We did give up some plays, but they weren't scoring. And I'm judging off this, the first half where you're going to see the role players and backups that are trying to make this team. And you're not so far in the second where you're, you're getting really sloppy football. I'm judging it off of a defense that looked really good in the secondary that looked young but looked hungry. Uh, you got a guy like Anthony Brown that looked very vulnerable, and it really, really showed in those things where he's looking like our new Awuzie, where he's right there in the coverage, but he's just giving up the play. I think these bigger guys and those younger guys, you're seeing them make these plays because they have the link, they have the reach, and you're seeing that bad thing in Anthony Brown. I'm curious to see how Jordan Lewis steps up being a shorter guy coming up into these preseason games. And, and seeing if he makes this roster, if he might be a cut as well too, that we're not expecting because he does have a contract. But Anthony Brown, I think, is that in that bubble right now. And I, and I think most Cowboy fans know that too. To me, I'm still on the bandwagon of Jalen Smith. And I love Vanderish. I love what they're doing. And I think they had a down year last year, but I still think they're a big intricate part of this defense and they need to be here because this linebacking core needs to be the whole anchor of this because right now it's not going to be the defensive line, but it looks good. The defensive line does look good. So I'm looking forward to this amazing defense to hopefully complement an amazing offense. One of the biggest questions going into the game and definitely the big concern is Dallas Cowboys backup quarterback. And I think that answer was more revealed in the sense of Garrett Gilbert, especially with the competition that's behind him. He looked like a guy that could really manage the game. And yes, at times looked uncomposed when his first initial read was not there. But I think that can be coached out. But I think that's also a reason why he's not a starter in the NFL. Nobody's taking the time to kind of coach that stuff out of him. But to me, he looks like a very solid backup and exactly what this team needs. And you're hoping he only hits the field when there's an extra point needed. To move forward with any team and to improve, you always need to know your own shortcomings. And I think you need to know that also as a fan so you have ammo to fight with. To know that this team needs to cut two people automatically with Ben DiNucci and Anthony Brown, there's no argument to give because even with great camps and good preseasons, I don't think they make this roster and unless they flash like Hall of Fame type thing, nobody's going to change their tune about them getting cut. 
they can only put out good film to hopefully make a roster somewhere else because I don't see them having an improvement to make this roster. The one position that this Dallas team definitely needs to address is the kicking game. With Greg Zerloin just coming back from back surgery, you won't see him in the preseason and he won't be ready to go until the actual season when the games are on the line. Will he be to his former self or will he be a liability like guys like Vanderjack that came in and just could not kick like they previously could? I think these are things that you need to address because you want at least somebody on the roster, if not onto the practice squad, that can come in, kick some field goals because we have seen good Cowboy teams go down because of kicking that wasn't even up to par. So that's it for this episode, guys. Thank you for tuning in. I'm going to go watch some more camp battles as these guys try to make this roster. Watch some Law Nation, some Vots Lombardi. I love seeing those guys break down camp battles as well in some of those preseason games. I know in the next episode, I'm going to preview the Arizona Cardinal games. Some of those key battles that we had in this episode will continue on and see how these guys improve. But I'm also going to show you some more camp battles that we haven't seen before and hopefully see some improvements in some of these guys as well. So make sure you guys comment. Let me know what you guys think about this training camp. Are you looking forward to any certain particular battle? And make sure you hit that like button for me. And thank you, Logan. Like always, make sure you ring that bell.